First, uh, we will be inviting Olivier Lebas, who is uh, Vice Admiral, uh, Vice Admiral Olivier Lebas, who is the Maritime Prefect for the Atlantic. Uh, he has conducted more than a hundred um, missions uh, worldwide, including Iraq and Afghanistan. And working nationally and internationally on behalf uh, of the French Navy. So he now has a civil function, that of a maritime prefect for the Atlantic. He's uh, across this uh, area which stretches as far as the Mont Saint-Michel, uh, his playground, uh, so to speak. Uh, he has uh, 45 different missions uh, for conducting state action at sea, uh, including uh, fighting against illicit maritime activities uh, and the management of protected species. So, um, there is inter-ministerial collaboration at sea. Uh, this uh, unique system uh, is quite original and it's through this collaboration system that that actions are conducted at sea uh, on behalf of the French government. Including maritime security issues, of course. Now, I would like to hand over uh, to uh, Monsieur Lebas, who will be discussing uh, the question of the role of the authorities in maritime uh, shipping. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Sadra for inviting me uh, to, to speak today on this uh, important topic of uh, container shipping. I will mostly be discussing response, uh, in particular uh, to accidents involving containers. Standardization and uh, uh, protection of uh, containers have had an important impact uh, on the maritime shipping industry. In 19... Uh, there were, sorry, in 2019, uh, we had 55 million uh, TEUs, and in just 20 years, this number has been multiplied by three. Container transport has, has led to the banalization of uh, uh, on-deck uh, transports of goods. Uh, given the number of containers now transported on deck, it's important for me uh, to address the problem of the loss of containers overboard and the, the important consequences on uh, shipping traffic. In the Atlantic, we are all uh, we're all specifically concerned it's, uh, it contains some of the largest ports in Europe it has dense traffic with dangerous uh, goods transported and often very hazardous weather conditions uh, with strong swell and cross winds the weather conditions are these adverse weather conditions are continuous throughout the winter in 2019 uh, there were current 42,000 ships um, and off the shores of Ushant Island uh, there's extremely dense traffic, increasing the risk of the loss of containers overboard. There's 
also a high risk of collision uh, between container sh ships and other ships using uh, the traffic separation system of Ashant. This type of incident can generate important disturbance on shipping traffic in such a strategic zone. So this is an important issue for uh, the Atlantic and, of course, uh, for myself as Maritime Prefect. The probability uh, of such scenarios is uh, clearly increasing. Over the past 15 years, about 1,200 um, containers have been declared to be missing uh, in 26 different incidents. The, there's been the loss of 517 containers uh, in February uh, 2014 uh, off Ashant Island. Uh, two years ago, uh, I can give, cite the example of the Grande America. For several weeks, we were mobilized uh, to be involved in this incident. There were only uh, 27 containers in 2020 declared missing in uh, the area uh, under my responsibility. Uh, the MSC Zoe, uh, one of the largest container ships, lost 342 containers between Germany and the Netherlands. On average, each year, 1,400 containers are declared as missing by shipping companies. On the shipping line between France and the Pacific, over 1,800 containers were lost during a single incident, showing, demonstrating the volume uh, that can be represented and the retrieval issue involved. So there's great variation from one year to the next. Now that we've had uh, an overview of the situation, I'd now like to explain how an operation uh, takes place following a major incident. Uh, so in France, it's the, known as the Orsec uh, organization in the event of an emergency. So the first action is going to be to review the situation. This is often a difficult uh, part of, of the proceedings. It's often difficult for the crew themselves uh, to understand and explain, in fact, what has happened. So that there needs to be a, uh, sometimes a visual inspection uh, despite the hazardous conditions. Meanwhile, uh, the maritime authorities uh, will seek the ship's manifest um, uh, by uh, contacting the ship, ship owner, uh, who, be, who may be more or less reluctant to provide uh, this document. Uh, so there are sometimes uh, uh, errors in these documents. It's essential for us to obtain this information in order to assess uh, the risks and in order to determine the priorities for response. It's important to know the number of containers that are drifting at sea. We also contact the loaders uh, to obtain the bill of lading and to determine uh, the types of goods on board. Are they dangerous goods, uh, for example? To do so, I uh, need to have uh, an incident management team they, uh, they, this is a really a meticulous job. They have to go through the list container by container to determine uh, their contents and the, the priority in terms of risk. So the priorities, of course, are going to be containers containing uh, dangerous goods or polluting goods. 
then containers that are a risk for navigation that are floating uh, at the surface or subsurface are going to be important as well as containers that could uh, be problematic for fishing in terms of dangerous goods we need to take into account the physical and chemical characteristics of the products. Uh, to do so, we work together with CEDRE to uh, make a technical assessment of the products. Uh, the CEPOL, the French Navy Anti-Pollution Centre, uh, is also involved in uh, reviewing uh, polluting chemicals prior to response. Although the volume of dangerous goods on board uh, container ships is limited uh, compared to bulk carriers, for example, the degree of danger can be high. Uh, we, the Atlantic uh, area has, is a very rich marine area, uh, including a protected uh, area and Natura 2000 sites. There have been efforts to review uh, the flora and fauna in these areas, and so all these elements must be included uh, in my approach and in the emergency response. So I'm trying to illustrate uh, the background here before uh, treating an individual uh, response. The risks in terms of navigation uh, and, and for the fishing industry need to be assessed. Um, there's the issue of products that may be soluble uh, inside the containers. Each container requires uh, an to be studied individually. This is an area with dense uh, shipping traffic, uh, with merchant vessels, fishing vessels, military vessels, passenger ships. Uh, when we talk about incidents uh, that ha that occur in uh, in uh, the Vendée Globe uh, sailing race, we talk about uh, unidentified objects. Um, so, for those who are uh, familiar with sailing, uh, they they'll be aware of um, the fact that there can be various objects uh, that can create risks. So as you can see here, the loss of containers uh, creates various risks, including obstacles to, to shipping, uh, also health risks, and risks when the container is uh, drifting towards a beach, for example. When an incident occurs, the first uh, actions I will take, uh, they're, they're quite varied. First, I will give uh, the owner a formal notice uh, to put a stop to the danger. According to French, a French regulation, uh, uh, according to French regulations, the um, ship owner must then take the necessary action. This is an effective tool. It's also quite flexible uh, in that I'm able to specify the expectations and the requirements of the ship owner. The ship owner can be uh, required to uh, locate the containers and uh, thereafter I can, uh, once the containers have been located, I can indicate them uh, as a warning to uh, other vessels.
In fishing areas as well, I can also indicate the risks to fishermen. The maritime prefect can also ask uh, the ship owner to retrieve uh, the container. For example, if the container uh, shows a specific toxicity, uh, this is the kind of thing I would only do if it was materially possible, of course, and feasible. Uh, and that will also involve assessing the state of the container. Following this formal notice, I will uh, then take action to ensure that I obtain as much information impossible, as possible. Uh, that's important in order to be able to assess the risks for local inhabitants. So I will also uh, warn, uh, send out a warning uh, using all using the geographical coordinates, also the information obtained from the MRCC. I will communicate with uh, fishermen uh, just to ensure that anyone at risk uh, is warned of the presence of this container. Then uh, I would uh, contact uh, the onshore uh, authorities. If the, the containers uh, are likely to come to shore. It's also important to assess the risks for the crew. And to prevent any further losses of containers. So, to uh, reinforce uh, securing of containers to make sure the ship doesn't lose any more. There have been examples of incidents where the vessel has lost uh, containers in two different places. So that's what we're trying to avoid. The aim is to obtain an objective uh, review of the situation. You can sometimes see photos of, uh, of boats that are listing by 40 degrees and it can be really very impressive. So assess, a risk assessment is one of my, my main priorities. And using the we use the information that arrives to reassess the situation and our priorities. I, of course, have a very robust um, risk assessment uh, team that I work with uh, for all decision making. The second stage in the process, once we've managed the initial emergency, is then uh, to detect the container fallen overboard. At the moment, uh, the main method is using uh, aircraft. Uh, the French Navy, of course, have specialized planes for this. But the, there's uh, an increase, there are new technologies uh, that are increasingly sophisticated that can help with this uh, search. So after they have been found and located, we must um, predict their drift in order to determine where they're going to go, because of course at sea uh, objects will move. So we use a GPS buoys, uh, which will emit an AIS signal. So a, a system that can be uh, directly attached to the container or can be attached to a buoy close by in order to be able to recover these containers if necessary. I also uh, am assisted by the drift committee uh, that is led by Cedre. Uh, 
qui euh, motive hein, un outil de justement de calcul de so, uh, and that will help so using this tool uh, called Morphe uh, it helps it, they are able to predict uh, and forecast the drift of the container uh, according to the current, the wind, and the conditions. So when using this tool, it's important uh, to have very accurate input parameters. Containers that are very watertight can drift at sea for a very long time. Cont other containers will take on water uh, very quickly and will will sink rapidly in order to detect these containers we can also uh, use uh, minesweeper vessels uh, in shallow waters uh, and also, uh, after a certain amount of time, uh, we also obtain information from fishermen uh, who can come across these containers. So ideally, uh, if we can uh, generalize the use of pingers on board containers, that will help to uh, locate them uh, more readily. So the aim of identifying and detecting them is then to be able to recover them. So if the ship owner is considered to be at fault and the container is generating a risk either for navigation or a chemical risk, they may be required to be recovered. This is always quite a delicate operation. It requires uh, specialized vessels, uh, specialized uh, pollution response and assistance vessels. Of course, before recovering a, a container, we need to closely analyze uh, the condition of the container and its deterioration, especially if it's containing chemicals. And that's why we use cameras um, in order to identify any pollution around the container. We also use underwater and diving equipment, as we also do in other circumstances, uh, for example, uh, plug other undersea operations. Just briefly, uh, onboard risks, uh, of course, uh, the risk of fire, which is a, a huge problem for, for, for ships. When you have uh, a fire among many stacks of containers, it's obviously very a complex situation. So it's very important that we uh, develop uh, appropriate firefighting capacities. Uh, so there are teams uh, currently working on new technologies. For example, uh, CEPOL is also uh, studying how to improve firefighting capacities on board. I'd also like to highlight that the capacity of these ships has uh, been multiplied by three over the past 20 years, while the firefighting capacities have only been multiplied by two. So it's not, there's not an adequate increase in firefighting capacities. And crews have been decreased by 25%. So the question of the gigantism of these vessels is of course problematic. There's the question of uh, the fuel tanks, the bunker tanks of these vessels. So if we take the example of the HM Algeria, for example, it can trans nearly 24,000 uh, containers and has a capacity of 12,500 uh, tons of fuel. 
As you can see in the photos uh, with the example of the Grand de America, which was in fact a relatively small container ship, the great difficulty is uh, responding uh, to this fire, which can last for, for several days. So while the, the, the relatively small volume inside uh, each container uh, limits uh, the po pollution problem uh, as an initial, if we, on the surface of things, the dispersion of dangers in this bric-a-brac of, of containers really um, makes um, incident management far more complex. With the rough conditions in the Bay of Biscay, anyone who's uh, sailed in the Bay of Biscay will, uh, won't be ready to forget it any time soon. So with all these elements of the scenario, as well as other um, factors such as the risk of oil spills, so every uh, each semester we have a, a training and exercises in order to ensure uh, optimal readiness uh, to reduce the impacts of an incident, uh, including the political uh, in impact, impact on the population and impact via the media. Thank you for your attention.